in orange letters the title, Mutter. In an orange colour wash, a young black woman holds a lychee in her long fingers. She turns it around and starts taking tiny bites of the peel. The image defocuses into a blur as she goes on biting. I should be sad if I read sand section first and then you hear bits and then I come back to the sand section. In sharp focus, she pulls the shiny round fruit from its textured peel and puts it whole into her mouth and starts chewing. Discourse on the logic. Discourse on the logic of land. Discourse on the language. Language. Dis. 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 Language. 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 Which. Language. How many of you know this poem? How many of you know this poem? Not many people good. <laughs> Not many people good. <laughs> she puts down the segmented peel, and the image blurs. In close up the soft, shiny red texture of the flesh of a blood orange, overlaid with a window showing a roughly dissected blood orange, its flesh red and ribbed. English is my mother tongue. A mother tongue is not a foreign land, land, lang, language, languish, anguish. The pockmarked outer peel of an orange in close-up, a curved line running across the middle of it, resembling the mouth of a fish. Foreign anguish. A partial view of a kitchen sink, with two plates stacked in a drainer. A chopping board perched against a cobalt blue tiled windowsill. In the sink, a utensil leans against the rim of a mug. A brown-skinned female hand turns on a tap. The woman starts to sponge a glass saucepan lid. Thank you so much, Brenda. Yes, if you said correct, I'm called Mr. Frederick Scotch. I teach in SCLP Summer School, Sri Kachi River Patel Summer School, based in Nairobi West. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've worked there for 16 years. The woman rinses the soapy lid under the tap, shaking it and turning it over in her hands several times. The woman soaps the lid a second time and rinses it thoroughly in the long, thin jet of water. She turns it over and scratches at a stubborn stain with her thumbnail. She places the lid into the drainer. And we are running a London-based curricula, mm -hmm. which most of you know as IG, but in full is IDCSE, the National uh, Certificate of Secondary Education. Now, I teach in secondary side. I handle English, literature, and English language. Mm -hmm. I'm also one of the administrators. In I'm also one of the administrators. In She reaches for a large saucepan, which has been soaking in washing up liquid, and starts to sponge the inside of it. She sponges with one hand and holds it with the other, the thumbnail of her left hand painted orange, the thumb itself double-jointed. She pours the water from the saucepan and rubs it with the abrasive side of the sponge. Overlaid with the image of a large heirloom cabbage leaf and two drops of water dancing across the veins of the leaf as it is shaken. The saucepan that is slightly burned at the base is scoured thoroughly and swilled with clean water once and a second time, finally being placed on the drainer. Kenyans are the second most fluent English speakers in Africa. According to a ranking by Global Private Language Tutor, Education Fast, a ranking which primes the... In a pink sepia wash, a tall maize plant with sculpted drooping leaves stands against a cloudy sky. ...country to attract foreign investment. Now the English proficiency index by the Switzerland... In monochrome, the image of a black farmer in a white shirt standing in front of a field of sugarcane, in three-quarter profile, his eyes barely visible beneath his brimmed hat. Puerto Rico, 1942. 
the color turns moody blue. This company ranks Kenya behind South Africa, even though Nairobi still emerged. A floodlit basket of shiny dark purple aubergines interspersed with its pale green foliage. As the highest blessed African city. Globally, Kenya was placed at position eight. In saturated daylight, a single aubergine hangs off a tall, thin stem that rises from a patch of unruly grass. The camera spans across to another plant with more aubergines hanging down. A shifting repeat pattern of identical 12 sided peach colored shapes edged with small cream dots. A ghostly face appears behind the pattern. Fennel bulbs are stacked together on a rosewood table next to a glass jug filled with lavender stems, close to a mother of thousands plant with thin red translucent stems and green leaves in a black plastic pot. English isn't a good language to communicate in. The picture disappears in a glare of dazzling white light. The repeated pattern appears in the background. The pale pattern changes to a vivid orange and red that judders. A caption appears along the bottom. Samaki mkunje angali mbichi. Bend the fish when it is still wet. A proverb from the coastal area of Mombasa, known as Likoni. Mostly, I would imagine, because people try to speak English instead of trying to speak through it. I don't know. Maybe this is a silly poem. I mean, it's my house. And I'll fry so chops and bake sweet potatoes and call them yams because I run the kitchen and I can stand the heat. A sweeping view along a kitchen counter revealing a fruit bowl containing half an orange, some apples, and an avocado pear. Behind the bowl, in a wooden shelf unit, among a row of cookery books, one stands out with the title Tartine along its sleeve. A bunch of bananas lies alongside the bowl, next to three shiny purple aubergines. And behind them, in a plastic crate, a spice cabinet full of jars of spices and condiments. Packs of kaffir and bay leaves. A pack of zata lies on the counter. What do I have? What do I have? An assortment of objects on the counter. A spice jar stands next to a green plastic handled knife. A pestle and mortar. An almost empty plastic bottle of water. A pack of kettle chips tucked next to the plastic tub. And the glimpse of a microwave oven as the view sweeps away. In dim light, a cream formica kitchen counter in a wooden fitted kitchen, where a cooking pot stands on a ring of a gas cooker. A microwave oven is tucked in the corner of the counter, next to a red retro-style toaster, and a large chopping board by a tall, thin, wooden storage cupboard. A partial view of a pot is placed on the gas cooker, and the gas is turned on. Next to the cooker nearest to us, chopped tomatoes mixed with sliced onions wait on a white chopping board. The pimento seeds. Spring onion as well as onion. No, and I had cloves in the cupboard, so that was good. A Caribbean scotch bonnet, not Kenyan scotch bonnet. Not corn flour, but flour flour and that process of throwing flour into the water and just like getting a little bit of thickness. The narrator throws down a spoon next to the pile of chopped tomatoes. A fresh sprig of thyme. So, so necessary. A jar of fresh coriander is placed next to the cooker and just by it, a white plastic bowl of chopped potatoes on top of other vegetables beneath. The whole picture jerkily comes into view. The tomatoes and onions on the white chopping board, a wooden spoon lying across one corner, the bowl of potatoes, and the jar of fresh coriander. Cut to black. A handheld view of a desktop on a wooden shelf unit. Ah, oh, hello, Jolly. Hello, Joel, you're not here. You're here, you're here. 
on the TV, volunteers during the Civil Rights March, Washington, D.C., USA, in 1963. On a bus during the Civil Rights Movement, a black American woman in sunglasses and a short-sleeved uniform with a round badge pinned to her chest puts on a paper envelope hat with the words Freedom Now! exclamation mark written across it in large block letters, like the woman in the seat behind her. A young black guy is on the phone at a desk next to a row of tables laid end to end and covered in paper cloths on a pavement, where a small crowd of people has gathered. Next to him, a white girl looking exhausted holds a pen. A caption reads, Call a friend. On the TV, crowds of black onlookers facing front appear to be listening to an unseen speaker. At the Civil Rights March of 1963, in the distance behind them, the gleaming white needle-like Washington Monument. The onlookers, American protesters, cheer with all their breath during a civil rights march. Many of them are wearing the white paper envelope hats, like those worn by the women on the bus. A photograph of a group of women in a living room back in the 1920s. The photograph is carefully staged like a tableau. One young woman stands in a doorway. Another engages with a female seated at a piano. Another is knitting. Another quietly reading. An older woman, possibly a grandmother, sits forward in a wicker armchair, observing a younger woman, possibly her daughter, playing with a baby girl. Words on screen read, Stay at home, read a book, learn how to stitch. The image is from the Cornell University Library and shows an image of the living room of the lodge with students and baby Richard in 1921, taken from an article by Alice Blinn for The Nation's Health. The protesters at the march walk with banners held high. More words, we march for, we demand an end to police brutality now. A song is being sung during the march. Cardiff's gotten me so upset. Bornholm made me lose my rest. And everybody knows about Minneapolis, god damn. A wildfire in colour, with more words. Is the Brazilian rainforest, California, Canada, still burning? Mm. The TV screen goes dark. This is my sixth trip to Berlin. The screen lights up. A band of rainbow-colored visual interference flickers across the center of a bright blue screen. Words appear beneath the screen. Utters of what? Ists of what? Utters east. Utters west. Utters freedom. Fates for whom? East German politician Gunter Schabowski, who served as an official of the Socialist Unity Party of Germany, is seen on DDR1 TV in a clip from a press conference on the 9th of November 1989 that announced that people could travel unrestricted from West and East Berlin. Berlin. The screen goes blank. A mixed-race young woman with a colourful headband, Mai Ayim, Afro-German poet, educator and activist, is reading her poem Borderless and Brazen in Berlin, a poem that rails against the pretense of German unity. I will be African, even if you want me to be German. And I will be German, even if my blackness does not suit you. Auch wenn ihr mich gerne Deutsch haben wollt. Und werde trotzdem hmm. Deutsch sein. Auch wenn euch meine Schwärze. A green and white patterned lesso cloth. The distorted image of a Swahili woman in a green patterned kanga, picking berries from a bush. Two other women in pink and orange kangas sit on two swings attached to one tree. A caption reads Jami a group of people sharing a common understanding. Two other young women chat to each other on a grassy slope, the breeze ruffling their patterned robes. 
This footage is taken from a documentary that talks about the history of Kangas, and in particular, is about the community that is formed by women who wear Kangas. <laughs> Two other Swahili women pick fruits from a green leaf tree with a slender undulating trunk, under two meters high. The red and black treadist pattern flashes intermittently up on screen. As a bearded stall holder in glasses and white shirt, standing behind the counter in a fabric stall, takes payment from a customer. He hands the customer their purchase in a plastic bag. A white guinea fowl in a sun-filled wire-fenced enclosure with other guinea fowl pecks at her neck feathers. With the caption, Kanga, a chatty bird. The black and red trellis pattern judders. This is a kanga pattern that is shifting through the frame. Kangas are used as means of non-verbal communication as they have a message at the center of the cloth that is known as the jina that bears a written message that is either a proverb, saying, aphorism or slogan. The reason this pattern is shifting and changing is to signify the message of the kanga. A proverb reads, Usi mwingilie ali opewa kapewa. Don't attack a person who's been given something because he or she was just given. The pattern shifts. The clapping is heard through a window. A defocused image sharpens, revealing an orange blossom bush gently swaying in a breeze. Mm. Mm. A computer window pops up over the left side of the orange blossom bush, showing an email chain, and beneath it a caption. Three gongs for Heidi. The window disappears. A tall, narrow computer window shows a housefly making its way across a counter by a windowsill. The caption reads, Things will be uncovered soon. There are beliefs that seeing houseflies means that something will become apparent soon or that a change will make itself known soon. A third window pops up. Beyond a decorative wrought iron railing, a partial four-paned sash window stands in the background, its white frames in need of a coat of paint. Two terracotta window boxes on the sill. A plant with long, thin stems grows in front of the window. The jerky handheld camera view of the orange blossom bush with its delicate five-petaled white flowers contrasting with their dark green foliage. A jerky colour-saturated negative of the bush in blue, purple and orange over a real window dotted with raindrops. Their hands at the root, repotting, repositioning, prayers in ways my tongue never believed it could. 
fingers deep in black earth, holding space for all the stars we call Mother. The bush with its clusters of abundant white flowers in their natural state. Mm. A computer window partially shows a young black girl with glasses, her hair combed off her face, sitting on a red settee. She's wearing a green sleeveless vest, purple shorts, and is eating a ripe mango from a white bowl. The background of trees, seen through a window, defocuses. A colour filter bathes the background, a honey-coloured yellow. The girl in the centre, peering vaguely through her specs, is in full technicolour. She looks down at the elbow of her right arm and takes a few more bites of succulent mango. And uh, I started thinking, oh, why is it that I'm praising this white deer? Mm. How accustomed am I to that? Quite accustomed, actually. A breeze sways the branches of the trees, bathed in a yellow filter. And uh, I thought about uh, what that was about, whiteness. Cut to black. Flowers are color-saturated red, their foliage deep cobalt blue, superimposed over the window looking out. Across the bottom of the screen, Usia wa mama ni mwongozo dunyani. A mother's advice is guidance in matters of the world. I spent all winter in carpet stores gathering patches so I could make a quilt. Does this really sound like a silly poem? I mean, I want to keep you warm. And my windows might be dirty, but it's my house. And if I can't see out sometimes, they can't see in either. And if I can't see out sometimes, they can't see in either. And if I can't see out sometimes, they can't see in either. House plants, layered on top of each other, stand in shadow by the window. Monstera, mother of thousands, and zizi plants, now seen as a negative print. And if I can't see out sometimes, they can't see in either. Cut to black. Back to positive, and in almost complete darkness, a figure sits near the window, silhouetted in the faint light coming from outside. The person softly moves their hands, their fingers paddling the air. Leaves hang limply in the darkness. In the layered semi-darkness, the figure makes hand shapes. Articulate. No, German bullshit. You know, you're no longer in Germany now, little girl. I'm not a little girl. I'm a woman. Cut to black. No. No. No, no. No, 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 no. A blurred kanga segment of irregular colored bunched black shapes on a red background creates an uneven crisscross trellis effect. I'm not a woman. No. No. Nah. The pattern shifts. Flashes of pink pulsate on some of the vertical and horizontal red lines. The colors change to deep pink and purple. The uneven black shapes now pale gray and constantly shifting, pulsating. <laughs>
the pattern screen reveals itself to be a curtain that is pulled to the left, and dazzling white daylight pours in through the window. A girl pushes the curtain as far back as it will go. How to grow a flower. If the soil has died... The figure silhouetted against the bright light from the right-hand window, shadow boxes, hopping nimbly on the spot. Reach for the roots with care. Do not dig too much, as this disrupts the natural balance of the earth. The roots will cry, or may appear broken beyond repair. The light background glows red as the slim young person dances on the spot. An upright tube of aloe vera gel, rosehip oil from a small bottle, and a brown jar of whipped shea butter stand in readiness as a young woman rubs the lotions into her back. Do not worry. Whisper. Pain will either change or end. Pain will either change or end. Pain will either change or end. Pain. In natural light, her slim fingers rub the cream into her flawless brown skin, pressing down in a circular motion. A small rectangular window offers the view of the drooping fronds of a bunch of dried flowers, and beyond the window where the plant is standing, a dazzling white orb. Change or end. The orb blurs and refocuses, revealing it to be a white bowl containing a yellow liquid at the bottom. The bowl of melted shea butter oil is cooling off on the windowsill to become solid. Pain will either change or end. These words come from the black radical feminist Audre Lorde. Read to them all the teachings of these traditions as they will learn ways to root in this blackness. The girl moves her fingers to her shoulders and her upper arms. The bowl blurs and sharpens. The girl lifts the tightly curled hair at the back of her neck and rubs her skin with her fingers, coming in repeated contact with the gold chain around her neck. She rubs and massages the back of her neck her fingers searching out the subsurface knots in her upper back. Replant them in a song that doesn't have a beginning or an end, that understands their language of breath, of breathing. Wash them, bury them in new soil. Both hands glide down her back. In the small window, the view of the bowl backs up and the camera focuses in on a bunch of yellow and orange straw flowers. The girl turns to face the camera, as if it's a mirror, with a knowing look in her dark eyes, her pink lips pouting, a delicate stud in her nose. She rubs her arm. She luxuriates in the feel of her fingers on her neck and her chin. Wait for the winds that will carry the ashes of their lineage to rest not far from them blessing them to meet their blossom as reflected to them by their shadow in a window obscuring the girl's shoulders and face a juddering close-up of the mixing bowl containing the batter a whisk hovers over the batter, and the girl turns towards the camera, coming right up close, as she sensually rubs her chest, her fingers lightly touching the delicate gold chain around her neck. Prepare. I could yeah, perfect. This is the perfect here in this empowerment space. When you also empower the klamotten world, then you know where you are. <laughs> Behind the whisk, a partial faded sepia still of a woman, her head unseen. Ear to ear chains, earring chains, then ich das. Dann irgendwie nochmal meine Masken zeigen. Habe eine passend zum Head Wrap. Das Maskenbusiness schaut jetzt gerade so ein bisschen ab. In full close up, her face obscured, 
The girl rubs the cream down her glistening, naked chest. Her full pink lips come into view as she rubs her shoulder. The flowing movement continues in saturated blue and lilac light. Cut to black. A house plant with succulent pointed green leaves stands in a grey pot. The film ends on a blurry image of smoke drifting up from a glass jar that is burning charcoal, frankincense, myrrh and incense resin. Behind it, perched against a pile of hardback books, is a simple colour illustration, coming in and out of focus, of two black femmes kissing fondly, one with short dark curly hair in a pink sleeveless top and pale blue knee-length skirt, the other with flowers in her orange braids, a brown top over a pale turquoise skirt with yellow and white flowers and a matching clutch bag under her arm. They're standing behind a border of large pale pink blooms. Behind them, a peach pink sun. The illustration is a postcard by Bulk Moody Boy, an Afro-Indigenous non-binary trans illustrator. Thank you all so much. Thank you, folks. Have a lovely night. Have a have a wonderful end of your day. Take care, you guys. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Have a good night. Thank, Thank you. you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thanks. Bye bye. Thank you. Cut to black. Dedicated to my mutter, Heidi, 1946 to 2020, and Zipporah, 1960 to 2001. Essist v. Essist. Film by Kondo Heller. Poems. Discourse on the Logic of Language, M. Norbisse Philip. My House, Nikki Giovanni. Borderless and Brazen, My Ayim. Talking to the Lord, Kondo. How to Grow a Flower, Too, Kondo. Found Footage. International Curriculum versus CBC. What is Taught in International Schools, Part 1. YouTube uploaded by KTN News Kenya, 9th of September 2019. HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash www.youtube youtube.com forward slash watch question mark V equals KZNX NIBQ underscore NY. Audrey and Gloria I. Joseph on German politics after the fall of the wall. Uploaded by Audre Lord in Berlin. An online journey. 1995. Kenya rated second best in English fluency test. YouTube uploaded by KTN News Kenya, 31st of January 2020. HTPS colon forward slash forward slash www.youtube.com forward slash watch question mark V equals BFE NIQBANAL. Lord Audrey. Audrey and Gloria I. Joseph. On German Politics After the Fall of the Wall, uploaded by Audre Lord in Berlin, An Online Journey, 1990. Found Footage Ayim May Mauerfall, Wiedervereinigung, May Ayim, Hoffnung im Herz, Mauerfall, Mauer, Berlin, Wiedervereinigung. YouTube, uploaded by Afrotag TV, Media Archiv, 10th of March, 2010. HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash www.youtube.com forward slash watch question mark V equals E C S E Y I T R S F E and T equals one four S. Clifton Lucille, poet Lucille Clifton reads from voices at the 92Y. YouTube uploaded by 92nd Street Y, 17th of February 2010. HTTPS Colon forward slash forward slash www.youtube.com forward slash watch question mark V equals E A S B O A A hyphen underscore T G dot. 
Giovanni Nicky, 1975 interview with poet Nicky Giovanni. YouTube uploaded by GBH Archives, 14th of January, 2019. HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash www.youtube.com forward slash watch question mark V equals N4 QN KTP TAIQ. Jicaro Nakaunti, Hang Out with the Legendary Taraka Dancers, Part 2. YouTube uploaded by Weru TV, 29th of June 2020. HTPS colon forward slash forward slash www.youtube.com forward slash watch question mark V equals 5Q2U GSM 4N58. Found footage. M. Nobesa Philip reads Discourse on the Logic of Language from She Tries Her Tongue. YouTube uploaded by Words Aloud, 5th of February 2011. HTPS colon forward slash forward slash www.youtube.com forward slash watch question mark V equals 424YF9EQBSE. Presse Conference DDR Reiseregelung 09 11 1989. YouTube uploaded by Basic Master Reloaded 1st of November 2015. HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash www.youtube.com forward slash watch question mark V equals K Z I A X G Y Y 75 Y Tamwa the history of Kanga YouTube uploaded by Muhyiddin Michuzi 1st of October 2011 https colon forward slash forward slash www.youtube.com forward slash watch question mark V equals J-A-U-A-B-O-H-E-E-A. -E -E Other archival media. Pond 5 Public Domain. Flickr, The Commons. Thanks to M. Norbese Philip, Nikki Giovanni, Audrey Lord, Mai Aim, Lucille Clifton, Oretha, Julie, Boris Klaus, Each One Teach One, Berlin, G50 Family, Frank Ocean, Kalela, Shia Butter, Blip Moody Boy. Special thanks to Stephen Bode, Katie Byford, Mike Jones, Leah McGurk, Susanna Chisholm, Raymond Sadani, Nadim Din Gabisi. Audio description by Veronica Hicks for IUNO SDI Group.